There is no one, no one, that I would rather be in a foxhole with than Dr. George Grace. I'd like to introduce our president and chief executive officer, Dr. Philip Oswell. Thank you very much. Welcome, everyone. Thank you all for, for being here. Persistence, courage, tenacity, unrelenting advocacy. I knew of him before I actually knew him, and then I got to know him. You know his bio. Born in Virginia to a family of domestic workers, attended segregated schools. What did he see to be except himself? His family moved to New York. He started working as a hospital janitor, then obtained more and more education and rose up the ranks, ultimately president of the greatest healthcare union in the world. I knew of George Gresham before I actually knew him. And then I got to know him. And to know him is to see firsthand that his determination is only matched by his courage, by his integrity, and by his devotion. He is relentless in his advocacy on behalf of each of you and the hundreds of thousands of healthcare workers, hardworking healthcare workers across this nation. He has walked in your shoes. He understands your challenges and he shares your dreams. His career is marked by the unyielding pursuit of improving the quality of life for all healthcare workers. I've sat across the table from him and I've seen him go to war for what he believes in and for what is right. And I've said this before and, and I say it to our people often, there is no one, no one, that I would rather be in a foxhole with than Dr. George Gresham. <laughs> On a personal note, he's been a mentor. He's taken me under his wings. He's been one of my great privileges of my life to get to know him. Although I'm CEO, he goes out of his way to help me to be better at serving the interests of all. I call him Big Brother because that's what he is. We have someone who's not only a labor leader, he's also a civil rights leader. And he has the scars and the bruises and the deep wounds to back it up. And with everything that he has to deal with every day. He continues to fight and dedicate his life for the interest of others. Lucille Clifton, the poet laureate, has a poem that's titled, Won't You Celebrate With Me? And I think of our colleague and our brother every time that I think of that poem. And it says, Won't you celebrate with me what I have shaped into a kind of life? I had no model. Born in Babylon, both non-white and woman, what did I see to be except myself? I made it up. Here, on this bridge between starshine and clay, my one hand holding tight my other hand, come celebrate with me that every day something has tried to kill me and has failed. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my deepest, deepest honor to dedicate this garden as the Dr. George K. Gresham Garden. I don't know what I've done to deserve it, but I hope that God gives me the strength to keep on doing it. This is a very, very, high recognition and it's something that I'm sure 
whenever we get to those family reunions, I'm going to be bragging. <laughs> Dr. Oswald, I want to thank you to my 1199 members and the other employees that are here. Trust me, I've dealt with enough employers to know Dr. Oswald is the real thing. Honest to God, from the bottom of my heart, no one takes the cake like you do. I learned so much from George Greshman. And I am so proud of what I become. I'm proud of my relationship with our members in the union and with Montefiore Hospital. It's because of Montefiore that I can sit here on this Escalade right here. One of the few people, I think the only person in the history of 1199 to actually be a delegate, an organizer, a vice president, an executive vice president, secretary treasurer, and president, and now serving his sixth term as president of 1199. I'm gonna give myself a time limit by thanking Montefiore Hospital, Dr. Oswat, and all of the healthcare workers for what you do every day to keep us fighting. Thank you, thank you everyone.